Hello, this is BSJ. So, I'm not gonna, like, read you guys the entire patch, because I'm sure you guys can see it, or you have seen it, or you can read it on your own. But what I am gonna do is go over what I think is most important to the carry role, and also the heroes I play. So, one of the first things to note is that starting mana is increased by 50, although you get less per int. I think this is a big deal for a lot of spell damage, or spell casting agi heroes, Slark included. Heroes like PA, stuff like that. I think it's actually a pretty significant buff to those heroes. Heroes that have very low cost spells, but very low mana pools. I think it'll help their laning stage significantly. I may be over exaggerating that, but I think that will make a pretty big deal for uh, heroes like that. Like on a hero like Ursa, you actually have like an extra... An extra Earth Shock if you buy a couple branches. You'd have one more Earth Shock than you would otherwise. So like, you know, on a hero like PA, that's like two or three extra daggers depending on what level it is so i think that's actually relatively important as a carry player for int heroes not a very big deal the spell damage amplification i think is nice but i don't think it's I, like i don't see it having a big effect honestly like for the heroes that have the most int it'll be at most like a 10 percent increase and that's like a lot of those heroes didn't really scale that well in the first place so maybe we'll be seeing more int cores but i don't think so honestly i think it helps invoker a lot but other than that not really as a carry player, this means now you have tier 1s only grant 1 armor, but it's still something. And tier 2s even, in the mid to early game, it makes it a lot harder to dive people as the carry, and it makes it a lot harder to dive you. So I think this will deter a little bit of early aggression, which may be in the favor of the carry. But in general, I think it'll just be a little bit of a hindrance to aggressive heroes, so maybe we'll be seeing a little less aggression super early. But honestly, they've like done these kind of adjustments in the past. Don't think it's that big of a deal. The bounty room no longer giving experience. Pretty big deal for uh, the mid lane. Means there's a lot of heroes that were good in the mid lane because they got an early level 2 from the creeps. And now that is not the case. So we'll be seeing the effect of that for sure. Melee attack range increased to 150. Pretty big for all melee carries. I think that's just something that'll be a, a small but maybe significant buff to every single carry. That is melee. And, I mean, supports as well, but they don't obviously do nearly as much auto-attacking. Lane lane aggro, also a big thing. I don't think that's a buff or a nerf to anybody. It'll just change a lot about how we do it. One of the biggest changes to the safe lane and mid lane is this creep bounty. Going for basically making range creeps give two and a half times as much as they used to give. A lot of times as a melee hero, you'd, like, give up taking harass to get to, like, you just give up you'd give up the range creep like you wouldn't actually hit the range creep and just accept that you're not going to get the last hit because it wasn't that big of a deal but now it really is like if you get denied that's you're losing out on 45 xp rather than 20 so we actually might see like that might be something that tips the balance in favor of heroes that can afford like like pa like not saying pa is going to be good but like pa that can afford to actually hit the range creep in their lane if they are pressured like, those heroes like that will naturally become better in lanes that are tough to lane in in the first place. I think that will definitely make a difference. And it's also a buff to heroes like Lich, which is really annoying. But that's okay. Let's see. Any other major changes that are just basic? Illusion's benefiting from damage block. I don't really see that affecting much. Honestly, I'd like to see heroes, I know it sounds weird, but heroes like Axe, I actually think might become a carry, as weird as that sounds. Not like a carry in the traditional sense, but become a one roll that plays the safe lane. I'm dead serious. What if you get like Blink Vanguard Manta on an Axe? I know that's crazy, but like, like your illusions are so strong. <laughs> like, you can't, your illusions won't die to creeps. They actually won't die to creeps or towers. So you can actually just like, in Centaur, same thing. Like, your Centaur Illusions won't actually die to towers, and they do return damage and all that stuff. Like, I actually could see Strength, Vanguard building cores, possibly going Manta as a carry roll. I know that sounds weird, but, like, third or fourth item, that's pretty crazy to think that a hero like Axe, like, the farming speed and stuff you can get from that. I'm not 100% sure about what the pan out of that's going to be, but I don't think it benefits Agi heroes. Like, I just don't think Agi heroes are going to build gonna build vanguard like it'll help when they have stout shields and poor man shields which is like kind of relevant but like i, I don't think a terrorblade illusion is any harder to kill with damage block on it than it was prior like most illusions die to spell damage in the first place so that's why i thought strength carry illusions might actually be significantly better 
because of that change. Thunderhide attack type changed actually affects life stealer. Does not affect anything else. None of this other stuff really matters that much in terms of the overall scheme of the game. There are things that matter, but it's not something that is worth going into for me. So new item wise, Bloodthorn, I think is gonna be an item that we honestly see very situationally. It's so expensive, but it's basically something that that gives going Orchid a late game potential. I think it's an item that's great for heroes like Nature's Prophet, heroes like Wind Ranger if they want to go that route because of the guaranteed crit. If we see a resurgence of Storm Sphere, which I doubt, but it could be. But other than that, if you weren't a traditional Orchid Builder in the first place, I don't think you're going to see Bloodthorn like on heroes that otherwise didn't build Orchid. So it's something that gives them a nice late game option, but I don't think it's going to change who builds Orchid. I may be wrong, but that's something I just don't believe. Echo Saber, obviously, we don't know much about the item in terms of, like, we know what it does, and we have an idea behind it, and I was checking it just then. But do we truly understand it exactly? And when I say that, I mean, like, just like people thought Dragonlance was going to be crazy last patch because it gave you an extra 130 range. Like, is it really worth investing 2,600 gold? It's only, like, I know you'd be like, oh, it's strength and int, but, like, I just, in attack speed and, like, in its mana region, like, oh, it's perfect for all these strengths and, like agi heroes that need mana regen and strength but like i just it's 2600 gold it's a slot it's not disassemblable and i just feel like it's like a mid-tier item that would replace drums but at the same time i don't feel like it's either going to be super overpowered or like very underwhelming i don't think it's going to be anywhere in between we may see it more on strength carries than anything but even then like i think it's going to work primarily on heroes that benefit from attacks like proccing on attacks it may even benefit heroes like ursa except for it doesn't really synergize with overpower very well like slark was the one that came to mind because of essence shift but overall i don't think like this is kind of like a headshot that's guaranteed and it's nice but like once again you're spending like the passive doesn't make the item worth it like at all and then you're only getting like meager these stats aren't that great for you. Like, just think of other items you'd rather have for 2600, or like you'd rather not delay. Like, like on most Agi heroes, I'd rather have a Yasha plus a wand than this. At least I think. So we'll have to just see. It only works on male heroes. So like I said, I'm not even considering ranged heroes. Like I don't think a ranged hero would ever buy this item. Like, if you're not buying it for the passive, what are you buying it for? Blightstone, nice item to go for the la safe lane for heroes that already build. Desolator, especially like Clinks, I think is a pretty big buff because he does so much physical damage so early. Overall, we may be seeing it on more heroes than you'd expect, but I, as a carry, I'd honestly only see it being a negative in terms of like the enemy offlaner buying it, possibly. But I don't see it being an item like you casually buy. I mean, it could be an equivalent of like an Orb of Venom, but I don't, I don't see that happening. Unless you're actually going to build in the Medallion of Courage. It may be significant buffs to like Clink's Weaver. Those are like the two that come to mind for me. Infused Raindrops. A little bit complicated item, but it's basically it comes with five charges. Item is destroyed when it reaches zero charges. When you receive over 50 magic damage, it procs, consuming a charge and blocking 120 magic damage. So basically, it's like an Ember Shield that doesn't do any damage, but it's an item that has five charges, and when it runs out, you like it just is consumed. I think this will be nice for heroes that are concerned about getting ganked, and I think it's like no way would you consider it like a regular item. I think it's going to be a situational item for carries. Honestly, mainly carries. Could I see it being bought on supports? Maybe, but I don't think supports would have the luxury for a 225 gold item like this. I think it's going to be primarily on carries that really benefit from 0.85 mana regen and are also concerned about getting ganked early to mid game. 
and have a slot for it. I think mainly early game. And like you said, it's only for the three minute mark. You can buy it at the three minute mark. So I think we'll primarily be seeing this for the carry role. And it's something I really look forward to looking into further as a carry player. But I, I honestly have a very hard time predicting the effect it will have. Depending, like a lot of survivability as a carry actually comes from just feel, you know, like knowing how much you can get away with and how much you live with with whatever items you have. And this is the kind of item where like I understand there's numbers to it, but it's still very difficult to tell if it's worth it or not as a carry player. Windlace, just something that goes into drums and mules now, gives movement speed, it's nice, doesn't stack with anything else, but it's, it's not an item I think you casually buy, can't afford the stat, can't afford the item slot, maybe bought casually on supports, but not on carries, like you'd just rather have so many other items, than to, even though the 20 move speed would be very nice. Tomb of Knowledge. I don't think carries will be getting it very much, but I don't think that's very relevant to my patch. And eh, you know, fuck it. Tomb of Knowledge is something where every 10 minutes, one player on your team can buy for 150 gold and gives them 425 XP. I mean, if you have a really underleveled support that really needs level 6, this is a huge buff to supports, I think, that need level 6. And pubs, sorry to say, but I don't know how it's going to go. A lot of more BMing ready for this kind of item. But I definitely think in competitive, it adds a whole new, like, whole new twist to the competitive scene. Hurricane Pike, my favorite item of the patch by far. I want to try it out on a lot of heroes, honestly. I think it's super good. Because basically, my argument for this item is so first off it's a dragon lance plus a recipe plus a four staff very cheap recipe so it's basically a four staff and a dragon lance all can be bought from base which is really nice something that people usually don't realize as a very nice thing that you can buy it all from base and it also slightly upgrades your agility when you buy the dragon lance upgraded to the hurricane pike like you go from 15 to 20 which is something people may not realize as well but it's something that i think will be very good on a lot of agi carries that arranged like i think i think drow is the first one that comes to mind i think this item will be crazy good on drow like crazy good only for this only for the purpose of the fact that like you want a mobility item to position yourself and prior you didn't really want to build a four staff because it was an item slot like literally because it was an item slot but now you can get a dragon lance which now gives you 20 or 15 agility on its own increased range and it's a cheap item that has a good build up for a hero like drow the two bands of elven skin and now you have this mobility item that can that like not only is it a mobility item for you but it's also like a get the fuck away from me item you know like get the heck away from me item it's just on a hero like drow especially i think this will help this will only be a carry item i don't see any supports building it like they may build force that but what kind of support would spend 2k gold for a dragon lance i don't I, I don't see any supports being able to do that. Making make sure I'm not missing any heroes. I do think Drow. Clinks, potentially very good. I think Luna even could potentially be very good. I don't know about Morphling. I think situation on Morphling, it could be very good. Because of certain heroes that like, like against like a Ricky or something. I think it would be really good on Morphling and Pubs. Maybe even a sniper. I know I'd like never build Dragonlance on a sniper, but you want like all these ranged heroes that want mobility. I think even Terrorblade like might even be decent because of Metamorph. But I, I, I this is something I still need to experiment with. But I'm really excited about this item. Huskar is the other one that came to mind. He's the only strength ranged hero. But I don't see any other into. I don't see any other heroes building it. I think it's an item that could make. I, I think it's gonna be like honestly the equivalent for Drow as that Dragonlance was for Enchantress last patch. There could be other heroes that get affected by it, but I feel like it's going to be like super good for one or two heroes, and that's it. But I'm super excited about the item.
Next item that I think is a big deal for carries is armlet. And how it grants 5 armor when you use it. That's that's 10 armor from an item that costs 2200 and gives a ton of damage. I think this will be huge for strength carries especially. I don't think agility carries benefit that much from this because they already have high armor. I think this will be huge for alchemist, lifestealer. Not the only two, but the first two that could like really stand out to me. I even think... If I had to make one bold prediction, because I'm not 100% sure it's true, but if I had to make one bold prediction, that this might make Huskar viable. Not good. Not good. But viable. And I, I'm going to leave it at that because of also the of the Lance item. Sorry, the Hurricane Pike. That plus the armlet buffs, I think, might make Huskar viable. I know it's crazy, and it, it may just, I may just, it may just flop on me, you know, but I'm going to definitely be trying it out. Another item, big deal, is that the uh, Diffusal Blade. I like this. I, I even proposed the 0 to 2, like I thought that was a good option. Give it a 2 second cooldown. It is basically a 20% nerf to PL, honestly. <laughs> I understand the main hero still hits you, and like, this is nice and all, but like, PL was literally based on this, so I think PL is going to have a tough time this patch simply because of this. It basically makes his illusions 20% weaker because that was their main purpose was to burn mana until the very late stages of the game. But I think this actually makes it really good on heroes like Ursa. Heroes that otherwise don't create illusions that built the Fusal Blade in the first place. I think this could be really good on because now like Ursa and an Overpower used to burn 150 mana and now he burns 240 which is also damage right it's also damage done on your attacks so none of the damage on the actual item itself was nerfed only the damage from illusions was nerfed but the damage itself on the actual hero was increased so i definitely think that this is an item that we could be see picked up much more on non-illusion carries i also think this is a big buff for weaver huge buff for weaver for an item that he like a hero that gets kited a lot and spends a lot of time chasing you I think Weaver will be seeing a lot of in this patch and could very well see a lot of Dragon Lance into the Hurricane Pike on Weavers as well. Drums, absolutely butchered for almost every agility and strength carry in the game. Just to re review, it basically gives you three less strength, six less agi, and replaces that with three HP regen. I mean, the whole purpose of drums the entire time I've ever bought it was for the stats, and now it just gives 9 int. <laughs> it's it's basically, you're buying a bracer that gives you movement speed in terms of stats. So I think that's pretty much butchered on almost every carry I play, as well as most other carries. Even strength heroes, like sure they only lost out on 3 strength, but a lot of them benefited a lot from 6 attack speed and 1 armor. That they're going to be losing, approximately 1 armor that they're going to be losing. Okay. Big buff to Heart of Trask again. I know, like, it's barely any more health, but it's just more strength. Like, every hero, every strength hero, I'm telling you, they're, like, want the strength heroes to come back. This is just another buff to strength heroes. Strength also gives 20 HP instead of 19, so, like, every strength hero, like, is just benefiting that much more of this patch. I really think they're heavily, like, they've realized that the last, like, two or three patches have been heavily dominated by agility carries. What else? Lincoln Sphere, good for heroes that naturally build into it. That's a significant decrease. Heroes like Morphling, I think, will be stronger. A Lotus Orb, not very important for carry players. Let's see. Aquila, lost one armor, gained one damage. Same for Brasilius. Well, we may be seeing it be less core on a lot of carry heroes. A lot of carry heroes built that item, but I think the main purpose of the item was to give you some basic armor stats, especially for the Aquila, and to help you push waves. And that aspect of it was not removed. Like, especially on heroes like Terrorblade that already have like a massive amount of armor. I think this will mainly only affect heroes like Slark that have light armor in the first place. So Sanjin Yasha, big deal. In my opinion, for melee heroes, significant buff. Massive buff. Like it's slight reduction on the slow, but it's almost double the proc chance. So I pretty much think that melee agility carries and strength carries will almost always have to build Sanjin Yasha now, in my opinion. If they built it before, they have to build it now, in my opinion. Like, it's just such a good item now. And ranged heroes would be much less more, much less inclined to buy. So big change to Silver Edge. First off, Shadow Amulet got reduced. And then, uh, basically, you replace the Sanjin recipe with an Ultimate Orb. And it also gives 15 all stats rather than 10. And it's disassemblable. I'm definitely going to have to look back into this on heroes like Slark. Slark needs stats, and strength was not good enough on its own to be good enough for Slark.
So I definitely think I'll have to look back on all the heroes that I kind of waved Shadow Blade off of and Silver Edge off of, especially if they build into items that use a Molten Orb. Because you don't even have to disassemble it, but it's like, it's 15 all stats for an Ultimate Orb now. And it's also like the Silver Edge gives reduced cooldown, gives more damage, or gives the damage reduction on the actual hit itself, which isn't that great because you used to have to like go out of your way to buy it. Like you had to buy a Sanj and a recipe, but now you actually just buy an ultimate orb, which builds into a lot of items that most heroes build. So it may actually be viable now. A very, a very common item, I should say. Let's see. Vladimir's slight reduction. All the other items in my opinion don't make a huge difference. Just slight changes, like slight nerf to Veil, slight nerf to Vlad, slight buff to Vanguard. Maybe seeing like more trends, like I said, for heroes that build Vanguard as carries, like Bristleback. So first hero, I'm going to mention for carry roll. I know it sounds weird, but I actually think Axe, going from physical to pure, barely any reduction on his actual damage, makes him scale late game. It used to be that he just wouldn't scale late the game because his counter helix was physical damage and people just built armor so it never did any damage in the late stage of the game this combined with the blade mail change the blade mail change making it such that blade mail reflects damage we'll just we'll just show you because i actually think it's relevant to carries even though it's not exactly a carry item but it's important for you to know it's basically like dispersion now if you like you do 200 physical damage to the guy it doesn't matter how much they take it's going to reflect the 200 physical damage back on you and then reduce whatever the 200 physical damage on your armor is. I think that's actually a pretty big nerf to Slark, and you'd be wrong to just not build Blade Mill against Slark on a lot of heroes that otherwise wouldn't build Blade Mill. Blade Mill really owns Slark, low armor, low HP pool, and Dark Pack kills himself. So that's unfortunate for that hero. But, yeah, Blade Mill on Axe, it used to be that you'd blink call somebody in blade mail and you take no physical damage so you wouldn't deal any damage with the blade mail <laughs> but now you do so i think that like i said another reason why i think axe might become a one position hero that i'm definitely going to be looking into bloodseeker i still think is kind of crap you don't want to build agonim scepter on this hero you need other items unless he somehow becomes a support and i don't think the other things are enough for the hero bristleback i think not only is he getting this buff this is like it may only be 20 but that's actually like a 10 percent decrease approximately which makes it so that every nine times you or every 10 times you would have or nine times you would have before you'll have 10 of them now like you'll you'll spawn 10 quills so if you're at 2100 health you'll do 10 instead of nine approximately which is like is relevant there's a lot of times that bristleback will lose mana fights by just a little bit or win them by just a little bit so like tipping the favor in like tipping the scale in his favor even slightly especially with the buffs to all the items that he naturally builds giving him an abyssal blade out of a vanguard that he already wanted to build in the first place other heroes drow i already said i think is going to be better just because of the item buffs we already know about these exciting buffs to heroes, but I'm only talking mainly about the carry role. I think Void actually became a much better carry. They took away a lot of his utility in time dilation, meaning like it's still very good, but like it's not really worth maxing anymore, in my opinion. Like, not that it's not worth maxing. Like, if you're an offlane Void, I definitely would still max it second. But like, I think he would be like Bash now outside of Chrono. Imagine trying to lane against a carry Void with attack speed items. With a possible, with a possibility of the saber, echo saber. Sorry, like just items like that. That like he now does 125 damage. I know it's not doubled anymore inside of Chronosphere, but max level it's basically doubled. And overall, like, so you're effectively in the Chronosphere doing, you know, you're subtracting 15 from 140. That's like approximately like. 12% damage, you know, a little bit less, 11% damage. But like outside of Chrono, you're now doing, you know. Like, what is that? 55 out of 70? That's about three-fourths, maybe a little bit more. So you're doing, like, 80% damage increase outside of Chrono with Bash. So, like, I think attack speed carry Void will actually just be crazy good, actually. 125 damage on a Bash is, like, not underestimated. That's like building attack speed items on Slardar. The difference is Void is actually survivable with his toolkit rather than the Slardar. I think that Gyro's kind of just getting wrecked 
in a lot of these patches. Like, every item that he wants to build is just getting worse. Like, S and Y is the perfect example. Drums. He may benefit heavily from the Dragon Lance, but I don't, I don't particularly think so. I just think the hero is really falling out of favor with the changes. I think the Ag Scepter is negligible for the sake of the balance of the patch. Negligible change to Huskar's passive. It's nice, but I think the main buff to the hero is in the armlet, which literally just gives him five armor because he builds it every game. Voker, don't think the nerfs were enough, but he's not a carry. A nice little change to Juggernaut. Think he'll still be a strong hero. I think, I don't know why they nerfed Legion. I believe this is a nerf from what I know about Legion. Basically, if you were hexed or ethereal after you started the duel, you'd still attack, including your opponent. And I don't think... I think Legion prefers her opponent still attacking anyways, even if she's taking damage from them, because she wants to counterattack. So, pretty big... Pretty big nerf, actually. There's a lot of ways to disarm people in duel, and it used to ignore that, so I don't know why they're doing that to Legion, because I don't think she's very good. So, this is insane, I just want to say... I know it's like a small change, but like when I say it's insane, it's like because of the creep buff or the creep change to range, range creeps for Lich is insane. And the only reason I'm referencing this is because now you're going to have to be dealing with this as a carry, I believe, a lot. A life stealer. You can only infest target ancients with level 2 and level 3 infest. And strength growth increased from 2.4 to 3. Long story short, I believe life stealer will be top 5 carries in this patch. And we'll be awaiting more information on that one. Let's see. Minor nerfs to Lone Druid. Minor buff to Luna. Still think she's not very good. Unless people start building new items on her. And that changed the meta. I just think there's heroes that do the job better than she does. I don't think the Scepter for Marana is relevant. I think Morphling Replicate is very significant. This makes the hero much better against heroes that right-click really hard. Against Terror Blades, against... Juggernauts, anti-mages, etc. Like, that 30% damage is significant when you're considering the carry-on-carry carry matchup. Naga, nice buffs to her. That's like reverting a nerf from a long time ago. So maybe we'll see more carry Naga. Thank God for the nerfs on Nature's Prophet. Still think the hero will be good, but not OP. I still think... Okay, well, first off, OD, welcome to the dumpster. It's good enough analysis of that stifling dagger it's like a nice change and the turn rate's nice as well turn rate's a pretty important thing for people who are relatively new to the game or don't really pay attention to it but i just think pa is just so bad like I, you have a late game counter with orchid builders as well now like orchid now screws her over in the mid game and the late game now so i just don't i don't see it i know it's like bkb able off but especially with the new silver edge like actually being seemingly a lot better than it used to be i don't see heroes with passives like pa heroes that are 100 percent reliant on their passive like being very good like i know i said that like about a hero like bristleback but it's like bristleback's passive makes them tankier percentage wise but like pa literally needs evasion to like like that's her kit that's what makes her good and like now she just doesn't so i i, I just think that's I think the hero is still really bad. Puck, major buffs. We'll be seeing a lot more Puck. Her Lucifer Orb now travels at a 651 speed rather than 650. That 0.2% travel speed increase. I'm sure we'll be seeing it affect the Procene Kappa. Let's see. Static Link Break Distance. Really big deal for Razor's laning. I think this will help him a lot as a carry. Honestly, I think it just makes him that much stronger in lane than he already was before. He used to always counter melee heroes, and I think this might make him counter even shorter ranged heroes very heavily, like incredibly like heavily in the lane. So we may be seeing a rise of Razor. I know it seems like a small thing, but the laning stage is like the most important part of the game. I think the static link increase will be a pretty significant buff to Razor because of his laning stage. Shadow Fiend, I think there's a pretty irrelevant changes to him silencer nice that they gave his arcane curse a slow but the last word no longer slows so basically they made his arcane curse like really good in my opinion as like a one point or like as like a maxed in lane could be seeing him more as a carry but I, I still think like i don't know seems like he's a mediocre hero regardless so i don't think sniper's very good still i don't think this is enough i think specter got nerfed enough this is good 
The most important change is that the slow no longer goes through magic immunity. Slide increased on haunt. They're no longer stunnable and her growth of Agi is reduced. Overall, I think she'll still be viable, but situationally viable against heroes she's actually good against rather than every single game. So yeah. For anybody who watches my stream regularly, you would know how much I hate that hero. So thank you for that. Sven, I actually don't think he was very good last patch. Like, I think a lot of people were realizing his weaknesses falling off. He may come back with the armlet build. I think that Sven's were already experimenting with armlet, and the armlet buff is just significant. I, I can't express enough how significant that armlet buff is. But I still think... I'd have to wait and see for this hero. I still think he's mediocre, though. Base armor for Terrorblade increased by 3. For you, those of you who don't know, he now has 10 by far the highest base armor here on the game. Also, they increased the base health pool. So, I think this will increase his landing stage significantly. I'm in the right games. And with other changes that occurred with items, such as Dragonlance, I would like to see how this affects Terrorblade, and I can certainly see him being one of the top five carries in this patch based on these changes. Not just, like, obviously the base armor isn't what I would consider, but it's just the other items and stuff that he builds. Like, none of them really got nerfed. Sanja and Yasha kind of got nerfed, but once again, he's, like, only a ranged hero, you know, a certain percentage of the time. And the Sanja and Yasha is mainly for the farming and the movement speed around the map. You get Scotty for the slow. I think Troll still sucks. Pretty much all I have to say about that. This does not solve his laning problem. So, and that's his problem. So he will continue to have that same problem. Poison attack is no longer an attack modifier. Really good buff for Viper, even though we all hate that hero. Makes a lot more a lot more builds viable on the hero. I think Weaver is just really strong. Time lapse now disjoining projectiles. You'd be surprised how significant this is. There's a lot of times you'll get stunned by something that like, you'd time-lapse and get stunned, and then the enemy team would be able to catch you because you were getting stunned by something like a Vinch stun, or an, whatever it is, or like a Sven stun, because of the fact that you didn't disjoint projectiles. So that's relatively significant. I also see this possibly being a chance for offlane weavers with, like, a support with them in a lane where they'll do well, uh, even in competitive. Like, imagine having this on an offlane weaver. Like, I'm imagining, like, Diffusal Ag Scepter on weaver, being pretty crazy with the 40 mana burn on defusal as well as the fact that you now have, you can just save an ally every 16 seconds and this is a nice buff to weaver as well the fact that sakuchi now works properly basically which is nice wraith king also might be one of the top carries the patch obviously mana burn from defusal is significant nerf to the hero so i think we may not be seeing him but basically he has no way of farming and this solves that problem somewhat like it helps address the problem for a hero that has a lot of trouble farming so basically the main notes i want to take from this patch is the armlet buff i think the five armor for a lot of strength heroes strength carries especially that are high hp pool low armor is a very significant buff like i said earlier i think the ones i have in mind are lifestealer alchemist and even heroes that are not even traditional carries but also huskar even being a potential forerunner for that item cannot underestimate how much five armor helps when you literally did nothing to get it meaning like compared to last patch these heroes that buy armlet simply have five more armor than they did before on strength heroes like i said even on wraith king like 10 armor on wraith king that's huge he has like two base armor with like low agi gains same with alchemist huge so i want to emphasize the armlet buff i want to emphasize the possibility of more ranged heroes coming out because of the four staff plus dragon lance combined into the hurricane pike i want to say the iron talon was not touched so i think we'll be seeing a lot of that I also think that Void is a stronger carry because of the changes to Bash and a slight increase on Time Walk, even though they reduced the or they increased the cast point on it. I think we'll be seeing a lot of Weaver. I think we'll be seeing a lot less Spectre. I think we'll be I think OD is completely in the dumpster. Like he's gone. A hero like Slark is really hard to judge because it's pretty much how much the meta favors aggressive offlanes. If the meta favors aggressive offlanes, then Slark will not be very good. And if it doesn't, I have a feeling that Slark could make have a lot of impact on this patch. I also think Terrorblade is going to be one of the strongest heroes 
in the patch based on what I've seen going through it. I think the patch is going to be heavily lane oriented. So in general, heroes that like the heroes that are weak laners are going to be few and far between in terms of how popular they are. Like only a few of them are going to be popular. And I believe that the main source that we're going to be seeing in the carry role is heroes that just dominate their lane. A hero that also wasn't mentioned in the patch because no changes were to him that I'd like to mention is Ursa. Something I didn't go over that I probably should have for is the fact that the Roshan XP bounty is significantly lower. You see it here. It goes from 17 to 89 constant XP all game to 75 plus 20 per minute. So basically at the 52 minute mark and after you get more than you did prior, but now it's less. So here like Ursa definitely it's hindered by that, but I think people understood Ursa as like a hero that benefited only from Roche really early. And it's something where the big thing for Ursa, yes, the Roche XP was very nice. But if I go for a 12-minute Roche, I'm still getting a 1,000. Like, the main thing is getting the Aegis. And, like, I this, this I really like this change simply because it removes, like, the strategy of, like, cheese, cheese roaching in pubs. Like, even in the 6K, how are you going to stop, like, in a pub game, an Ursa that's jungling from roaching at level 4, or, like, 4 minutes in, you know? Um, like, it, it, like, maybe you stop him the first time, but you have to stop him, like, all game. I think that this Ursa is still very viable and other heroes that take Roshan, but I think it's going to be a lot less about cheesing and more about like heroes that benefit from the Aegis, and Ursa is one of those. So I think Ursa will still be strong, but I think we need to see, like, I, I think I need to see how the meta turns out before I really judge heroes like Ursa. That didn't really get touched, but also... Last note I want to re-emphasize is the change to range creep XP. I think carries that can generally farm the range creep will be much better, meaning that basically implies stronger laners. If you're like trying to soak the lane, you'll be getting a lot less than you would prior because if you were in the old days, meaning 6.86 and prior, if you were like kind of getting more XP out of the lane and not farming it as much, you'd still get like one or two melee creeps a wave, but you'd like never get the range creep. And that's actually like a big deal now. If your range creep is denied, that's significant. That's basically like getting a deny and a half on the melee creeps in the past to get that denied to you. So it's going to be a pretty big deal to be able to withstand your lane, in my opinion. But I think that's going to favor carries that are much more mid gamey and much stronger in their lane. Especially heroes like, even like heroes like Slark that are weaker in lane, but like come online really quickly. I think this will benefit because if you give them a little help, if they can dominate their lane with just a little bit of help, then they'll be able to shut down the off laner that much more. So I'm really excited to play this patch. These are my general things. You also have a scan ability, which is like a side note, but we're all excited for. I don't fully understand it yet, so I'm looking forward to this. And then for all you pub players out there, the 15 second voting phase to ban heroes. Let's just say the best part about this patch is this note right here. You know why? Because if any of the heroes are really messed up for our pub games, at least we won't have to see them 50% of our games. That is really nice. So I'm excited about that. I'm really excited about this patch. I, 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 honestly, that's about the best description I can give you. I just have to play a ton. That's pretty much what it boils down to. So to really know exactly what's going on. And I hope you enjoyed this video.